Because gas is one of the states of matter, it has mass, volume, and temperature. Now, what is mass? So, mass refers to the amount of matter in an object. Kung halimbawa bumili ka ng karne sa palengke at tinimbang ito in kilogram gamit ang timbangan, yung kilogram na nasukat natin, that refers to the mass of an object. Alright, how about volume? When we say volume, it is the amount of space that an object takes up. Halimbawa yung soft drinks. Malalaman natin ang volume ng soft drinks kapag inilagay natin siya sa isang container. Kapag inilagay natin ang soft drinks sa container na 1 liter, malalaman natin na ang volume ng soft drinks ay 1 liter. Pero kapag isinali natin ang soft drinks sa isang container na ang sukat ay 1.5 liter at napuno ito, ang volume ng soft drinks ay 1.5 liters. So let's go now to temperature. When we say temperature, it is the measure of the average kinetic energy. Diba ngayong pandemic, kapag pumapasok tayo, sinusukat kung gaano kalamig o kainit ang ating katawan gamit ang thermometer. Halimbawa, ang nasukat gamit ang thermometer ay 36.6 degrees Celsius. Ang value na 36.6 degrees Celsius ay ang temperature o yung sukat ng average kinetic energy sa ating katawan. So sa ating lesson, meron tayong may encounter na isang quantity na gusto kong i-introduce sa inyo. And that is pressure. Now what is pressure? Pressure is the amount of force applied to a certain area. At dapat nating tatandaan na pressure is directly proportional to force. Ibig sabihin, mataas ang force, mataas ang pressure. Mababa ang force, mababa din ang pressure. On the other hand, pressure is inversely proportional to area. Anong ibig sabihin nito? Kapag maliit yung area na nalapatan ng force, mataas ang pressure. Pero pag malawak ang area na nalapatan ng force, ibig sabihin, mababa ang pressure. At dahil nga pinag-uusapan natin ay gas, we will investigate the relationship between volume and pressure at constant temperature of gas. And this can be explained using Boyle's Law. So, what is Boyle's Law? Pero teko lang, pag-usapan muna natin kung sino ba ang nasa likod ng konsepto ng Boyle's Law. Actually, Boyle's Law was named after Robert Boyle. Noong 1654, itong si Otto von Kirek, hindi ko alam kung paano i-pronounce yung kanyang apelyedo, pero yung spelling, ayan, ipa-flash natin sa screen. Naka-invent siya nung tinatawag na vacuum pump. Pagdating ng 1657, na intriga itong si Robert Boyle dito sa invention ni Otto von Thierry. So, ang ginawa niya, nilapitan niya si Robert Hooke at idiniscuss niya yung konsepto ng vacuum pump sa kanya. So, pinili niya si Robert Hooke na maging assistant and together, they, they, they devised the most famous piece, experimental equipment, associated with boil at tinawag itong vacuum chamber or air pump. Using this improved device, itong si Robert Hook and Robert Boyle, they carried out an experiment to investigate the properties of air and the vacuum and this led them to a great discovery and that is Boyle's law. Kaya noong 1660, si Robert Boyle at ang 11 na members ng Royal Society in London ay na-witness itong experiment na ito at nagkaroon ng discussion of the scientific topics. Now, let's return to present. Okay, so have you tried using a bicycle pump? 
pambomba ng bisikleta? Kapag hinila mo ang handle ng bicycle pump pataas, ano nangyayari sa volume ng air sa loob nito? Tama. Ito ay tumataas. Ano nangyayari naman sa volume ng air inside that bicycle pump kapag pinush mo pababa ang handle nito? Tama. The volume of air decreases or ito ay bumababa. And now, as you pull the handle of the bicycle pump pataas, what happens to the pressure of the air inside? Tama, it decreases o bumababa. How about if you press down the handle of the bicycle pump? What happens to the pressure? Tama, it increases. Based on our example, ano ang nangyayari sa pressure kapag ang volume ng air ay tumataas? Tama, ang pressure ay bumababa. Pero kapag ang volume ng air ay bumababa, ano naman ang nangyayari sa pressure? Tama, ito ay tumataas. So, based on this, we can say that the relationship between pressure and volume is inversely proportional. Ibig sabihin, pag tumaas si volume, bababa si pressure. Pag bumaba si volume, tataas naman si pressure. Pero, yan ay at constant temperature or yung temperature ng gas ay walang nababago. Now, we can state the Boyle's law. It says that pressure of gas is inversely proportional to its volume at a constant temperature. Now, using numbers, let us show the concept of Boyle's law. So, we have here learning task number one. In learning task number one, we have four trials. We have the volume of gas, the pressure of gas, and then here on the last column, we will uh, multiply the volume and pressure of gas. As you can see, our volume is expressed using the unit liter, and the pressure is ATM. Now, let us have trial number one. We have a volume of 2 liters and pressure of 10 ATM. So let us multiply 2 times 10. We have 20. And then, trial number 2, we have 4 liters times 5 ATM is 20. For trial number 3, we have 8 liters times 2.50 ATM, we have 20. And then for trial number 4, we have 16 liters times 1.25 ATM, we have 20. As you can see, we have arrived at a constant value of 20. Values na volume, makikita natin from trial number 1 to number 4, ang value ng volume ay increasing o tumataas from 2, 4, 8, 16 liters. Pagdating naman sa pressure, makikita natin from trial 1 hanggang number 4, ang value nito ay decreasing from 10, 5, 2.5, and then 1.25. So, in Boyle's law, diba sabi natin, volume is inversely proportional to pressure. Ibig sabihin, pag tumataas ang volume, bumababa naman ang pressure. Okay? Pag bumababa ang volume, tumataas naman ang pressure. Given that the temperature is constant. Okay. 
So at constant temperature. Okay, so using our example kanina, pwede natin ma-derive o makuha yung formula na related sa Boyle's Law. Given the situation na yung product ng volume and pressure ay constant. Ibig sabihin ng V dito, capital, that is volume. Yung capital P, that represents pressure. At kapag ganyan yung nakikita natin, ibig sabihin, uh, the operation is multiplication. So, pag pinag-multiply yan, ang makukuha natin value ay constant. E di ba sabi natin kanina merong decreasing at increasing na pangyayari? So, ibig sabihin kapag may increasing or decreasing na pangyayari, meron tayong initial at merong final. So, ang gamitin natin na symbol para sa initial ay yung sub 1 and then for the final is sub 2. Kapag halimbawa may increasing at saka decreasing scenario tayo, gamitin natin yung V1 times P1 is equal to K kasi sabi natin constant yung product. And then V2 times P2 is equal to K kasi nga ulit uh, constant yung product. So pwede natin to i-illustrate as V1 times P1 is equal to V2 times P2. So this will be our formula para kay Boyle's Law. So now, i-apply natin yung concept ng Boyle's Law sa isang sample problem. So gamit ang ating formula na initial volume times initial pressure is equal to final volume times final pressure. So babasahin ko sa inyo yung ating sample problem. Makikita nyo dyan sa ating screen. Okay? The inflated balloon that slipped from the hand of friend has a volume of 0.50 liter at sea level, that is 1.08 tm, and it reached height of approximately 8 km where the atmospheric pressure is approximately 0.33 atm. Assuming that the temperature is constant, compute the final volume of the balloon. So, ano yung una natin gagawin? Okay, so let us have the first step. Let us identify the given. So, in our problem, meron tayong 0.50 liters. Tingnan natin ang unit. That is liters. Ibig sabihin siya ay volume. At yun yung unang uh, scenario at yun yung unang nangyari. Kaya ang gagawin natin, nalagyan natin sa ng symbol ng volume, sub 1 or initial volume. Next, meron tayong 1.0 atm. 1.0 atm. Ang unit natin is atm at ang unit na to ay para kay pressure. Sub 1. Okay? Next, nabitawan niya, lumipad sa langit. Okay? Naabot ang 8 kilometers. At 8 kilometers, it is the distance, at 8 kilometers, ang pressure daw doon ay 0 0.33 atm. So, this will be our final pressure. So, meron tayong V sub 1, V sub 1, D, and V sub 2. Now, ano yung hinahanap o ano yung required na, o yung pinapakompute sa atin? Sabi ay, computein daw natin yung volume ng balloon nung siya ay nasa 8 kilometers na. So, that is the final volume. Yan ang nawawala. Now, let us have the solution. Applying the formula na V sub 1 times V sub 1, is equals to V sub 2 times P sub 2. Ang pinapahanap sa atin itong P sub 2 o yung final volume. Paano natin magagawa yun? Kailangan mapagsolve natin siya sa isang side. So, para mapagsolve natin siya, kailangan matanggal natin yung kasama niya na P sub 2. Okay. Ang operation natin dito ay multiplication kasi V times P, V times P. Kapag ang operation ay multiplication, ang gagamitin natin ay 
division para tayo ay makapag cancel out. So, i-divide natin sa both side. Kanino? Doon sa gusto natin mawala na kasama ni V sub 2. So, sino yun? Si P sub 2. So, i-divide natin siya both side kay P sub 2. Ngayon, meron na tayong mga cancel. Si P sub 2 na iwan na si V sub 2 at sa kabilang side, si V sub 1 times P sub 1 divided by P sub 2. Ito ang gagamitin natin formula. Pwede natin balik ka rin yan. Parehas lang naman. P sub 2 is equals to P sub 1 times P sub 1 over P sub 2. So, pwede na natin i-substitute yung ating values. So, let us substitute the values. We have V sub 2. So, ano yung ating V sub 1? We have 0.5 liters times. We have V sub 1 of 1 ATM. Okay? Divide P2. Ang ating P2 ay 0.33 ATM. Okay. Next. Bago tayo mag-proceed, tingnan natin meron tayo mga unit na ATM sa taas, meron din tayong unit na ATM sa ibaba. So, we need to cancel out the unit. Now, we have 0.5 liter times 1 is 0.5 liter divided by 0.33. So, we will arrive at 0.5 liter divided by 0.33 is 1.5 Pagdating daw niya ng 8 kilometers, ang naging volume o final volume ng ating balun ay 1.52 liters. Okay? So, makikita natin, dito mataas ang pressure sa at sea level. Pagdating sa 8 kilometers, bumaba si pressure. Sa sea level, mababa si liter, pero pagdating sa 8 kilometers, mataas si uh, volume. Ibig sabihin, inversely, proportional ang kanilang relationship at constant temperature. Okay? So, sana ay naintindihan ng ating sample problem. At para malaman natin kung kayo ay may natutunan sa ating sample problem, I want you to answer... The following exercises na ipa-flash natin sa ating screen at indicated sa inyong mga handout. Okay? So, write the given, the required, and the solution. Sure.